In this video, I want to show you how you can create a glitch look like I did in this painting. It will involve multiple techniques and filters that all work together to create the effect. I will be using Clip Studio, but most of the functions I use are also available in other programs, often just hidden behind different names. What's more important is to understand the individual components to achieve this look. We will create a pixelation effect, chromatic aberration, and many types of noise textures, some of which only interact with the light or dark parts of the image. But before we start putting our painting through all these effects, we need to take a very important step that you should always do. Create a copy of your painting. For the most part, we will be working on this copy, so that we can always revert back to the original if necessary, or just retry a single step in the whole process. Now, that doesn't mean creating a copy of the file, although that's certainly another way to make sure you don't lose your progress. Instead, I create a copy of my painting by merging all the layers, click Edit Copy, and then go a step back using Undo, so my layers aren't merged. Then I paste that flat image of my drawing on top of all my layers. If you're hesitant to press that Merge All button, you can also export the image to a file and just drag it in as a new layer. Just make sure you're saving it at the highest quality possible. With that out of the way, let's start creating the first effect, pixelation. I pick the rectangular selection tool, set it to Add Selections to randomly cut out squares and rectangles from my image. I usually go for parts where the glitch wouldn't cover anything, so I pick areas around the character. Next, I copy the selection I made to a new layer. On this layer, I use Filters, Distort, Wave. The rectangular setting produces the right pixelated and glitchy looking results. Then, if necessary, I erase any part of those glitches that are covering areas that I don't want to be covered. Like on the hair, for example. The next effect starts out quite similarly, but instead of using the whole picture, I want only specific objects to glitch. This can be helpful if you want to censor certain things or give them a mysterious aura. So I go through my layers and duplicate the objects I want to glitch. As I like to stay organized in folders, I have one layer filled with the line art and one with the color. I duplicate those to then merge these copied layers to a single layer with my object on. Next I use the same filter as before. Filter, Distort, Wave. But this time I don't go overboard with the spread of my glitch. I change the parameters so that the basic shape of my object stays roughly intact while it's still looking corrupted. When that's done, I want to create a chromatic aberration effect. You've probably seen this effect with old camera lenses, or emulated in many video games, where the fringes of the whole image start getting separated into their red, green and blue parts. To achieve this, I copied that layer three times, so I end up with four layers, all filled with the same object. Using levels, I can then select a channel and remove it from that layer by dragging the arrow on the bar from right to left. So if I remove the red and green channel, we are left with just the blue channel on that layer. On the next layer, removing red and blue gives us the green channel. And on the third layer, removing green and blue will give us the red channel. This means we have split the layer into its three color channels, so that we can edit them independently. Quick tip for Photoshop users. You can double click a layer and directly turn off individual channels in the window that pops up. Right now only the topmost layer of the three is visible, because they are opaque and cover each other up. Set the layer mode for the two top layers, in my case red and green, to screen, so they start overlaying on one another. Now you can start moving them around a little using the transform tool. Always make sure to periodically zoom out of your painting, so you can judge how far you need to move the layers around for the effect to become visible. If you have a giant canvas but only move the channels out by a few pixels, it will hardly be noticeable. It's easy to go overboard with the effect, by either making it too strong or using it too much, but I just like it. Speaking of which, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed these tips so far. The next ingredient will be a noise texture. You can find plenty of noisy textures on the internet, including that iconic videotape noise. But for this tutorial, I want to show you how you can create it yourself. Let's create a new file for it. Add a new layer and fill it with a solid gray color. 
with Clip Studio Screen Tone Filter, which you can find in the Layer Property section, I transform the gray color to these little dots. The frequency you want to use depends on how fine you want the texture to be. In my case, I used something around 20. Then I used the Distort Wave Filter again to add more randomness to the screen tone pattern. Next, I go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur and set the strength almost to the max for the highest effect, while the angle is set to zero to have it all blurred along a horizontal line. The picture looks very gray at the moment, but with level correction, I can intensify the contrast to a degree that leaves us with an almost black canvas filled with horizontal artifacts. I then use the screen tone filter a second time to add some more noise to the texture. And it's done. Now we can copy that texture into our painting. You could already set the layer mode of the texture to screen, but I don't want to overload it with just that one texture. Rather, I want to have it spread across evenly, in a more glitchy pattern. To make that happen, I use the technique from our first effect again and create random glitches that spread across my painting. So let's turn the noise texture off for just a moment. After creating a bunch of random rectangular selections in the painting again, I copy them to create a new layer and use the distort wave filter again. Then I activate Log Transparent Pixels. This means that when I start painting on the layer, I can only paint in the areas that already have color in them. Using this technique, I paint all these glitches black. Then I set that black glitch layer to screen. Now let's bring the noise texture back into play. I clip it on top using the clipping mask button. If you want to learn more about clipping masks and locking layers, watch my video 10 Digital Art Tips for Beginners. Lastly, you could again erase anything where you think the texture doesn't look good. In my case, I created a mask for my character, for example, so the texture doesn't cover him. The next effect I used was a much more simple noise filter, which is quickly explained. First, you create a layer on top of your drawing and fill it with a gray color that is exactly halfway between black and white. If you are not sure whether you hit the right shape, you can always check and adjust it with level correction. If the arrow in the middle isn't pointing directly at that black line in the center, drag the array towards that mark. Then set the layer to overlay. If you have a middle gray, that layer now should be invisible. So it neither darkens or lightens your drawing when you turn it on or off. Now go to Filter, Render, Noise. And you can again decide via the parameters how large and strong your noise particles should be. I made them really small for that grainy feel of an old photograph. To make it a bit more subtle, you can turn the noise layer black and white. Lastly, I want to show you how you can create noise textures that are only visible in specific light situations. The general noise filter already looks nice, but if you want to accentuate only certain areas or objects with that texture, in Clip Studio we have another option. First I choose my object, in that case it's my character skin. I select the layer the color is on and duplicate it. Then I use the layer property section again. But instead of screen tone, I want to add noise this time. For that I change the dot settings to noise, which creates a black and white version of the shading, full of noise. With level correction I adjust the darkness, which affects the overall spread of the noise. I only want to have a slight gradient of noise that basically blends in with the rest, so I make the noise layer lighter. Then I rasterize the layer. Next I want to isolate the black pixels, so I click on Edit and Convert Brightness to Opacity, which removes every white pixel. And this way we are only left with the black pixels. We can create a selection of them by right-clicking on the layer and picking Selection from Layer. With that selection equipped, I now go back to our original layer of the skin and create a copy. This way we end up with a layer that has the pixels of our noise texture filled with the shading of our skin. So at first it looks invisible, but if we darken the shadows using level correction, we can see the actual effect, a noise filter that only affects the shadows of our drawing. To do that for the highlights, the process is basically the same. I duplicate the layer again, but before adding the noise, I invert the colors by pressing Ctrl and I. Then I add the noise, adjust the spread with level correction, rasterize the layer and isolate the black pixels by converting the brightness to opacity. Then I can again do a selection of those pixels and create a copy of them. 
filled with the color of the original skin layer. Once again I use level correction to make the texture visible, but this time I lighten the highlights. And this is how I create a noise texture that follows my shading. Of course you can use this technique for much more than just skin. It works with everything you want to add texture to. It also isn't limited to be used only for glitchy images, but you can use it for any occasion. And that was all the effects I used for this painting. I'm excited to see how you will use this effect in your artwork. Let me know in the comments if you plan to use the whole effect or just individual techniques for your next painting. And if you want to know more tips and a more in-depth tutorial for the techniques that I use to create my artworks, I uploaded a video in partnership with Clip Studio that I'm very proud of only recently. Check it out to learn some more techniques. Also follow me on Instagram and Twitter for more regular art. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.